My name is Julia Koshitsky, and on behalf of my fellow co-chairs, we, the Toronto Jewish community, are absolutely overjoyed that this International Leadership Reunion is the best attended in our history. We are so proud to belong to this family who are forever in quest of an ideal. Mayor of the City of Toronto, John Tory. Beyond Israel's status as a beacon of democracy and the beacon of respect for human rights and dedication to free enterprise, this remarkable engagement and generosity makes it easy for me to have the respect and affection that I do uh, for the Jewish people at home and abroad. Canada's former Prime Minister, Stephen Harper. This organization is, I think, the foremost in the world in terms of defending and promoting the State of Israel. My government's recognition of Israel's right to exist was unconditional. Our support of Israel's right to self-defense was unequivocal. And our refusal to single out Israel for criticism was unwavering. But I want to say this to you. Not only was it the right thing to do, it was, particularly over time, despite what the media said, quietly supported by most Canadians. So I tell you, it was not as hard as you think, and you and we should expect absolutely no less from our leaders in the future. Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danon. As I said, we not only defend Israel's good name, but we also work hard to show the real face, the true face of Israel. And all of you are familiar with the real face of Israel. We are all very proud of what's happening today in Israel. Everything that was yesterday a great idea, today is a very old. This is exactly what's happened to the cyber defense tools. They are getting old very, very quickly. It's also disturbing to note that we Muslims can't find a single Muslim nation state that we can hold up as an example. Israel is like an oasis for the thirsty traveler and shines with distinction in the confusion and darkness surrounding it. If we are here to serve the continued significant existence of the Jewish people, we better be able to articulate what is it that makes the Jewish people resilient, repeatedly prosperous, and permanently in leadership. It is indeed my great honor to introduce the recipient for this year's Isaiah Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to welcome the 43rd President of the United States of America, President George W. Bush. The Isaiah Award is Karen Hayesod UIA's highest accolade, presented to leaders who, through their actions, have shown great commitment to Israel and to the Jewish values of Tikkun Olam, healing the world. President Bush, it is a great honor to be the first to congratulate you on receiving the well-deserved Isaiah Award. We would like to take this opportunity to welcome you once again to our Jewish community of Toronto. We are now marking the centennial of our Jewish Federation with a community of 200,000 strong. That community is vibrant, diverse, and united by a strong commitment to Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. Anti-Semitism is dangerous. I would tell you, in my judgment, it exists amongst a fringe. Most Americans believe in the freedom of religion and respect religions. And so the role of the U.S. is to reject anti-Semitism at home and abroad all the time. If this is an ideological struggle, then it's incumbent upon leadership to promote an alternative ideology that yields peace. And I came to the conclusion that there's only one ideology that yields peace, and that's freedom and democracy. Well, thank you, Mr. President. And can I, uh, in return, thank you for being with us uh, and agreeing to have this conversation with me and with all of us here at the ILR as we celebrate 
our vibrant Jewish communities around the world. Because in what we say, or more importantly, in what we do, in our ma'asim tovim, in our good deeds, we make a statement about ourselves as a people. Like many of you, we are concerned about developing our next generation, our children and grandchildren. And we are working hard to connect and engage our future leaders of tomorrow. I believe we're still here, not because we're a religion, a civilization, a, a culture, but because we behave like a family. The technology in agriculture is always very important to China. And I think another state in the world who, which built a miracle is Israel. In a not a very farmable piece of land, the Chinese have always let foreigners live in their land. And I can only think of two people in human history that are like that, the Jews and the Chinese. I was here two days. For me, it was the first time. It was for me a shock to see so many Jews from all over the world. And all these people are primarily concerned about one thing. How do we strengthen the future of the Jewish people? How do we strengthen the future of the Jewish state? All of us here representing 29 Jewish communities from around the world are connected by our belief in communal responsibility, in the Jewish value of tzedakah, in social justice through philanthropy, and with a deep and meaningful connection to Israel. Please join me in welcoming our Premier, the Honorable Kathleen Wynne. I have to say, I've had a number of conversations and it just seems like this International Leadership Retreat has been a huge success. So congratulations to everyone. Please welcome my dear friend, the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. 2017 is a pretty big year for Canada. A few months ago, we celebrated Canada's 150th birthday and the 35th anniversary of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And of course, 2017 also marks 100 years of the UJA Federation of Greater Toronto, 100 years of supporting the Jewish community here in Canada, Israel, and around the world. Since its inception, UJA has played a pivotal role in shaping Canada into an even better place to call home. You have spearheaded countless initiatives that have made a real positive difference in the lives of so many people. Your impact on Canadian society cannot be overstated. My government is proud to stand alongside the Jewish community here in Canada and around the world, and we will always be a friend of Israel. But make no mistake, we will stand for Israel, not just because we are friends, but because it is the right thing to do. Today, the world is embracing Israel and Israel is embracing the world. Thanks to the ongoing support of countries like Canada, this has led 
to an improvement in our standing in international organization and elsewhere. There's just one last thing I need to do, and that is to ask the three chair couples, Toddy and Irving Granovsky, Honey and Barry Sherman, Julia and Henry Kraszewski, to please join me up here for a quick minute. Thank you, it was great. To everybody involved, thank you. Thank you, it was great.